Okay, in this video we're actually going to create an assembly, which is something we haven't done yet. At the moment we're just in a part studio. And this has all of the parts in place because we've modeled them that way, but we can't actually move or explode the views. So we're going to go to assembly, and we're going to assemble everything the correct way. So we go to insert, and the first thing we want to add is our body. And we can hit the tick. Now we'll notice this is upside down compared to what we want. So when we click a part in this mode, we can actually rotate and move things around, which is something not available in the part view. If you want to move something in the part view, you have to move the sketch that created it. But in this type of view, it's actually a lot easier to get it done. So next we're going to insert the front wing and I might put in a copy of the rear wing since all these wheels are the same I'm just going to bring in one of them repeatedly okay let's have a look what we need to do here is to firstly lock down the body by going to fix and then we need to rotate and put all of these other shapes into position so this one will go to 180 this one will go to 180 we just get them in the ballpark there's no expectation that we actually move all of these very precisely into pl place that would be almost impossible to get accurately so instead we have all of these mates up the top and they're ways of snapping things together so for instance we have one called a planar mate and that's two planar or flat faces so if we click on this one and position the blue line in the middle and then spin around to our front wing do the exact same thing blue line in the middle we should find that our part snaps perfectly into place if we hit the play button it'll show any degrees of freedom sometimes that's quite misleading Probably what's easier to do is to hit the tick, click on the part, and then drag it out. We can see that it won't actually move when I ask it to. It will in this direction, but not in the other. So we're actually quite close to having this one locked down. To completely lock it down, if we wanted to, it's probably not completely necessary, is to come and add a second one of these lines. So I've done the inner line here, and I can do the inner line there and now it's perfectly in position. If I thought that was backwards, I can do things like reverse it with these two buttons, rotate, and you'll basically click these buttons until you had it facing exactly the way you wanted to do. Probably not really necessary to have that second plane I want, so I'm actually going to delete it. Now, the rear wing is a little bit trickier. We might actually go for a slider mate for this one and I'm going to hold shift to keep it on this back surface I'm going to bring it down to the center I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to hover over the surface I want hold shift and bring it down to the center you can see that it's locked it in using the two curves now unfortunately if I click and drag this you can see there's still has some degree of freedom. If you want, you can go along and add. Let's get that back where it was. I believe there's a parallel mate. So you might tell two flat surfaces you want them to stay in line, things like that. Another good use is for the Revolute to do our wheels. So we can say that we want the center. We pay attention to the blue line. And then we come back to our axle. Now, by default, it's going to lock them against each other. But we can also click Offset, and I believe we put in a 2mm offset for this part. It looks about right, because now it's in line with the outside. Hit the tick, and we can do that for all of the other wheels also. So once again, Revolute. Make sure the blue thing is facing, and once again, matching blue one, Offset. Two mils. 
if we wanted the wheels to sit further out, like anything else in this program, we can come and we can double click and we can set this at 5 and it will update, but we will keep it at the 2 for now. And we'll just very quickly do the remaining ones of these. So blue in the middle. Once again, if you're having trouble, simply hold shift and it'll stay on that surface and you can move the mouse to exactly where you need it to go. Offset. Two. And lucky last one. Offset of two. Okay, it's a little bit hard to tell here, but these will actually rotate. If this was a part with spokes and things like that, you would notice them rotating and updating in 3D. So one nice thing about an assembly is it will update as often as it needs to in real time from the part studio. So if we switch back to the part studio and I decide that I'd like to do our trick where we drag the timeline up to before the mirror and I'm going to take away a little bit more geometry here. So I might go for a fillet. Okay, so I have added my fillet here. When I come back to the assembly, you can see that it's automatically updated. Another thing we can do is if you double click on a part, it will take you to that part. If you like, you can then go back to the assembly. Another thing I really like is if you right click on it, you can edit in context which means it stays in this assembly view and it kind of grays out other things. So for instance, I might like to come and extend this wing, even though I couldn't actually do it because it's wider than the timber, but I could do something like that. And then when I'm done, I click back to assembly and I'm working in the same document without having to switch back and forth. You could have more than one part studio. I might add a new part studio and draw my final design for my wheel and then bring it into the assembly and I don't want to switch back and forth between all the tabs so doing that is actually a really nice way to edit the geometry without switching back and forth over and over.